lost a few homies. Some to a bullet and some to being phony. Niggas used to hate them saying niggas Joe me. Shorty says she love me, baby girl, you don't know me. Stuck to the plan, now I'm getting bands. Band at the band at the band. So let me ask. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. Go okay. Ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, how many kids do y'all have together? We don't have any together. I have, I have three kids. He have three step kids. We had no kids. He never wanted kids. Okay. Okay. So how did his attitude change? Like, how was it prior to him moving up, and how was it once he started moving up? Okay. So prior, he had a. He was great. Like, you know. He always had like small anger issues to me, just just like anyone else. But because he let stuff upset him, like financial stuff. But other than that, his he was great. Like I didn't notice anything prior prior before he started climbing up in his um in the company. Okay, like so, like what did he what did he change? And like, can you explain like? these anger issues, like, as far as, like, what would set him off and what he would do when he set it, when he was set off? I, you know, honestly, it's just, like, <laughs> the how you up, he got in the company, it's just, like, his whole person, his whole attitude changed because he felt like, even me, like, I was beneath him. Like, he felt like a lot of people were beneath him. It's like he became more materialistic as well. And he felt like he was superior over me and over a lot of people that wasn't on the site. I guess it wasn't making as much as he made in his career. Anyone that wasn't making the same amount he made or more, he felt like they wasn't nothing to him. So it was more like a personality and a verbal thing. It wasn't... Like he wasn't getting physical or nothing like that. So eventually, it got to that. Okay. So could you? So t- at first, it was just verbal, like, "Oh, you a broke b," you know. As he got came up in the company once again, everyone was broken. He wasn't. Oh, you a broke b. Oh, without me, you would be nothing. That's what he would tell me. I'm his wife now. The person that when he moved to this other. Co- County to get this job. When I moved with him, me and my father supported him 100%. He had no job. After he came up, leveled up, I was a broke B. Um, um, I would be nothing without him. If he leave right now, I would lose everything. He has nothing to lose. I have everything to lose. 
verbal abuse just like that. That's what I was told. Constantly. When did you ever feel like walking away or did you just feel like that was something that he was just going through at the moment and you just like brushed it off? Like I never wanted to walk away because I loved him so much and I still do, even though we're separated right now. I never just wanted to walk away from my marriage. Like I always wanted to be somebody's wife. And I always felt like anything could be worked through. Mm -hmm. Um Always. I just always felt like anything could be worked through. And I always felt like, and I was naive, I always felt like, you know, he would never leave me or he would never cheat because I done did so much to help him. Like, so much. So So I thought that my loyalty would be enough. That's what I thought. Yeah, your loyalty should be enough, man. A lot of people nowadays don't respect loyalty. I don't know why. But, so... When did you, when, how did you find out he was cheating? Like, how did that work? Okay, so, wow. You know how women have this intuition, right? Mm-hmm. So, I was at work for a whole week's break. Well, no, let me start over. So, we went out of town. We went to this casino, and we, we're not gamblers, but the casino is really nice. So, we just did something for the weekend, just a two-day little trip or whatever. This girl which is his cousin's best friend. She's married as well. She sends him uh, um, a, a free request on IG. So the, me and the girl, we never talked to her. She never talked to me. I, she done been around the family before, but I always felt like it was some tension there, and I, I never knew why. So she sent him a free request on IG. And so I seen it, and I was just like, oh, that's strange. She never sent me one in the I didn't think nothing of it. I didn't even care. So, I just had a bad feeling about it, though, because she sent it out of the blue. And, like I said, she never spoke to me. She never talked to me. She never even spoke to him or talked to him, and she'd been around the family all this time. So, the whole week, that whole week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I just had a bad feeling about this girl. I just felt like something was going to happen after that friend request. So Thursday, I was at work. I was still just feeling a certain type of way about this girl and that friend request. So I go go home. I get off of work. I go home. He's still there. He's asleep. I'm thinking. So I go in the house. He, I go in the room. I, I assume he was asleep because he was laying in the bed. So I go in our living room because we have a two-story house. I go in the upstairs living room and leave him in there in the room. So I, I'm on my IG, and I notice that he's awake because he up like in pictures or whatever so i go in the room and before because he's because he have to work that night shift so i go in the room to talk to him and so his phone is right there and i noticed that he's dming someone and i'm like who is you talking to i mean i just had a feeling and i probably was wrong but i just had a really bad feeling so i see that it's the girl he's dming and her cousin, both of them. So I was wrong. So I get his phone, his phone, and I see where his cousin. At first, it started off with the cousin. Mm -hmm. She's saying, "Hey, um, the girl named the girl. Hey, such and such wants you to call her." She said, "Hit her up," and he was like, "What's she talking about?" And so, this is his cousin. So, she was like, well, she said that she cool on what you said. You know how you went to get up with her? She cool on it. She said, hit her up when you get to work. And so, and so the girl DM him saying she wants to link up. The, the cousin, best friend, the girl. So, she DM him also saying she wants to link up. And I'm just, and I'm saying this because he's been up DMing these people. And I'm saying this and I, and I throw his phone down and I'm like, what the hell is this? What is going on? Why would you do this to us? Are you seriously thinking about hooking up with this girl? So he snatches his phone and he tries to grab my phone for some reason. And so when we talk, we tussling over my cell phone and he snatches my phone. He pushed me to the floor and he jumps on top of me, still trying to get my phone from me. And in the midst of it, I'm trying to call the police because he's on top of me and won't move. So I jumps up. I finally, I'm finally able to jump up. And when I jump up, he elbowed me in the mouth, in my lip. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, man. And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this was all while the, the operator, the 911, this all while they, they um on the phone at the same time or whatever. And so, so they're hearing all of this. And somehow the phone disconnected. And so he, I guess he knew the police was on the way because he started grabbing some of his clothes or whatever. In the midst of him, him doing it, I never will forget what he said. He said, you doing all this, but I can fuck who I want to fuck. Damn, that's fucked up. Yeah, yeah, I, I would never forget that. Like he said, I can fuck who I, you doing all this, but I can fuck who I want to fuck. So when he was saying you doing all of this, like what was he referring to? Was he referring to you confronting him about cheating and trying to hook up with somebody? Or was it, were you doing something right, else? Right, Oh, he was, no, he was talking no, about, oh. no, no, the, the confrontation. Okay. Now, did he? Do you think he purposely elbowed you, like, or was it an accident, like, in a scuffle? I really, I, I, <laughs> I want to say, I, I want to say he did it on purpose, but I really don't know because it happened so fast. But what I will say, he threw me to the ground on purpose, and also what I'll say is, he was doing so much that he ripped my nightgown that I had on off of me, like it was literally split into pieces, like real, it was literally split apart. Mm. So, was that the only time he ever put his hands on you? Of course not. When did it, like, that was the last time he did? That was the last time, yeah. So, when was the first time? Can you take me back then? <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, if it's painful, we don't have to, like, talk about it, but. It's a, it's just a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's just, it's a lot. But, I mean, the first time he ever did did it was we had an argument and we was going to get flowers to plant in front of our house we had just moved in our home and we was going to get sago palm trees i remember it like it was yesterday and we was at a gas station and we pulled over and i forgot what the argument was about but he like he literally hit me in my mouth he like he busted my lip really bad and as the day went on it got bigger and bigger and i had to hide from my kids so they wouldn't see it actually he told me to hide Damn. So that was the first time. Yeah. In yeah. my bottom lip. I never will forget it. You don't deserve that. No woman deserves that. That's and it was just all over an argument. Over an argument. Like that's what I'm saying. Like he at first, like I said, at first his anger issues wasn't that great, but like it's like as time went on, like it got worse. Like this dude have a serious anger problem and he has a horrible him and his family his mother does too and his two sisters but they pride themselves on hurting people and having a reckless mouth and having a horrible attitude like they literally sit around and talk about it like i'm not lying to you but they have some of the nastiest they have the worst attitude so you and say, I see where he get it from oh i'm sorry so i was going i don't mean to interrupt you i'm sorry so you saying like his i'm just shocked like that his his mom and his two sisters they sit around and make jokes about him hitting you no, they sit around and make jokes about how they treat people nasty. Oh, okay, okay. Like they, yeah, yeah. But, oh, yeah, speaking of that, when he came, after all of this happened, he, he um, after all of it happened, the police came, and they asked me did I want to press charges at that time on him. I said no, even though they seen my look, and even though they knew about him pushing me down. So, it, that was on a, that was on a Thursday. Friday, and... No, Friday, the next day, I went and did a police report, and I pressed charges on him for hitting me and pushing me to the ground. And so he, somehow he found out that I did that. So he had his cousin to call me every single day to drop the charges, every single day. That Sunday, he they had obtained a lawyer for him, and I met the lawyer on a Sunday at Dunkin' Donuts with his family members and him. He was there. Oh, he gave me the whole story about, um, I'm sorry. I know I have some things to work on. I'm really sorry. You've been a good woman to me. You such a you such a good hearted person, and you don't deserve it. We could go to counseling. We're gonna do better, or whatever. So he's saying all this, and he's saying, well, you know, I can't do anything if you press these charges on me. I'm gonna have domestic violence charges on me, and I probably lose my job. So I felt so bad about it, even though he had did this to me. I still felt bad about, you know, him going to jail and having, like, this felony or whatever. So I signed the affidavit to get the charges dropped on a Sunday. 
He oh. came back home that night, which, like, that's Sunday night. From that point on, when he came back to the house from when I dropped the charges, nothing was never the same anymore. He came back and told me that his mother hated me, his whole family hated me for pressing charges on him, and he said that his mother called him and told him that I don't know why she pressed charges on you and trying to get you a DV, uh, domestic violence charge because it ain't like you busted her lip up broken a rib or something, you just pushed her. And I said, oh my gosh, your mother said that, so she condoning you putting your hands on me. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. But I'm just trying to show you how evil his family, like don't, these people are evil, terrible people. And really, I'm just happy to be away from that. That's, that's good. Can I, all right, you said your dad, like you, you said your dad is involved in your life. Is your dad, your dad still alive, right? No, he's not. Actually, he died. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, he died in two. Me and my husband, we got married June the 13th of 2015. My father died that September 2013. So, but did did he I ever? Mean 15. I'm sorry. Did he ever put his hands on you when your dad was alive? He did, but see, my dad lived like in a whole. Like my dad lived in a whole. A whole other um, county than we did. My dad actually lived where we moved from, where he was going to college at. My dad still lived in that town. Okay. So we, yeah. So we moved like, uh, like. So I'm, I'm from Alabama. So I live like southern part of Alabama, like on the Gulf Coast. I live there now, and that's where we moved to. So it's like three and a half hours drive from where my dad was living at. And so, yeah, my dad died though. And he was very, he was very disabled anyway. He was pretty old. Did you have anybody to talk to about this? Like, about... I didn't. I didn't because, listen, so, like I said, we moved down here for him, for my husband, mm -hmm. to get a better job. And so, when I moved, I moved away from all of my family. I, like, I, like, I'm still living here. My husband is, too. His family is here, but I have no family here. So, I only have, like, friends, coworkers that I work with. So you, None of my family live here. So, but I'm saying, like, this situation and stuff that you was going through as you was going through it before y'all split and all that, you didn't have anybody to just talk to or tell, like, to get advice from as far as, like, the situation and inform them what's going on with you? Because he could have killed you and then nobody would have known anything. Right. That's true. So, mostly just my best friend, really, honestly. Mostly her. Because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because my family lives far away and I just felt embarrassed to talk to like my sisters about it and I don't know why like I just really felt embarrassed because I and also it's just you know when they come when my sister visit us it was always like he was such a good guy and everybody had this image like in their mind that he was such a good man and such a good provider and he was such a good guy so I was kind of embarrassed to tell them that's understandable. And did you did you not want to tell him too because you felt like maybe he'll change and you don't want to tarnish his image for them Correct. and y'all would be long. Correct. Okay, okay. I could dig. I can understand that. So now moving forward, like what's going on with your situation? So how did y'all end up actually just everything being over? So I didn't even know. So September the thirteenth. Mm -hmm. My I was at work, and my husband, we have cameras at our house, and so he was on the night shift, so I thought the whole time, September the 13th, I thought he would sleep the whole day or whatever, so I never did see him leave out the front door, because we have cameras on our doorbell, so I thought he would sleep the whole time, so I get a phone call at one thirty, and I was at work, so I answer the phone, and um, it's him. And he's telling me, oh, I'm in a whole, I'm in another state, and I'm at a casino. I'll be over here until about 2.30 or 3 o'clock. I'll be over here just gambling or whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. What are we doing tonight? Because at this point, we were supposed to be working on the relationship. We had went counseling, and he went that one time, and he didn't like it. So he told me he'll never go back again, even though I went two more times after we went together as a couple. And he, he would never go back. So at the same time, I'm thinking, okay, we're still going to work on it. It'll be okay. You know, so, okay, so he tell me he's gambling or whatever. So I'm like, 
we need to go on base. Um, we need some things. I need to get some things from off base. And um, this was a Coast Guard base. I said, we need to get some things off base or whatever. And I said, will you be back by 330 and he said, yeah, I'll be back by then. I said, okay, what are we doing tonight? I said, we need to do something. We need, we need to go on a date or something like that. And he was like, okay, that sounds good. Um, I said, what about, let's just go do something small since it's Friday night and we'll do something else Saturday. He was like, okay, let's go watch that movie, um, Hustlers movie. I said, okay, that's good. I said, okay, well, I said, I'm still working, so I'll just uh, talk to you later. Just call me when you get ready to leave. So that was 1.30. I got off of work at 3.30. He was supposed to be back by 3 o'clock or 2.30, as he said. Um, so I, when I got off of work at 3.30, I called his phone. I didn't get an answer at all. 4 o'clock, I didn't get an answer. 5 o'clock, I didn't get an answer. So about 6 o'clock, I go and take my vehicle to the car wash. And when I pull up, so, yeah, so I'm calling my husband's phone. I'm texting. He's not responding. So, 6 o'clock, I go to the car wash to wash my vehicle, and I pull up right up behind my husband's car. Oh, man. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. So, I jump out because, you know, at this point, I'm super, super mad because um, it's 6 o'clock, and I've been calling and texting and no response. So, I'm super mad. So, I pull up behind him. And I go to the window, and he lets the window down, and he's on the phone, and he's playing some love songs, which he never played because he only listens to rap. So I'm like, who are you on the phone with? I've been calling your phone for two hours, and I've been texting you. You haven't even responded, and you're supposed to be back by 3.30. Like, what's going on? How long you been back in town? And he said, I don't have to tell you anything, and he drove off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I go back to the house and I'm crying and stuff. And so he pulls up at the house and he says, I just got off the phone with my lawyer. I'm leaving you. So he packs his stuff and he um, tells me that he dislikes me, he hates me. And he packs his stuff and he leaves and he moves with his sister. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. But I mean, at least it might be, I guess it's a relief. Is a good way out of that situation. Yeah. But how did but how I, did that how did that make you feel? It was it was horrible. For two weeks for two weeks I didn't want to go to work. For two weeks I laid in the bed crying. Like it was it was terrible, like because this someone I've been with for nine years, like I mean, it's hard going to bed alone. It's hard like I used to talk to him on the phone every day. It's hard not even speaking to him. You know what I'm saying? Like, for two weeks, I laid in the bed for two weeks crying. Like, most days, I didn't even eat. I forgot to eat. Like, it was it was terrible. Like, it was. But it's getting easier, like, because on the 13th, it'll be a month. He, he's he been gone or whatever. But it's kind of getting easier because I have friends that I talk to, and they keep me on the phone all day, so I don't have to worry about thinking about him, but, you know, he's been contacting me, and every time he texts or call a pop-up at the house, it just takes me all the way back. I just, I just wish that we had no contact. So, and did you change the locks on your house? I changed the locks, and his lawyer told me that I could not do that because he still had access to that house. It's still his house. We're not officially divorced yet, and I can't do it. So, mm. I had to give him a key to the house. So, he could just come anytime he wants. Yeah, it's it's messed up. Yeah, he came. It's messed up. He came. He came. Actually, let me tell you this. He came two weeks ago with his cousin, the one that hooked him up with the married woman. Mm -hmm. He came with her, and he came with one of his sisters that hate me. And they tried. And he and he called the police over here when he came. He pretended as if he was coming to get his clothes. But he came and pretended to get the clothes and didn't even get the clothes. So they trying to jump out the car and argue with me and try to fight with me. So I told the police to make them leave my house or whatever. But yeah, he he pretended to come get clothes that, that he packed. And he packed the clothes and still left the clothes. Now, did the police tell you to try to get a restraining order on him? Because wouldn't that work? Actually, they did. They did. They did. They actually did a police report um, on the sister, the cousin, and my husband. But, you know, with me being the person I am, I haven't went down to the magistrate office and, you know, did the warrant. I just, I, I didn't do it. And I should do it. And I, my revenge, I want to do it. But, you know, then the other side of it be like, you know, just let it go. 
I mean, it's it's for your safety though, because anything could happen. He got the key to the house. He can pop up anytime he want. Then, like, what, who's to say? I don't want to put this in your head, but who's to say that he doesn't give somebody else the key and let them come in there, or he comes in there in the middle of the night, stuff like that. Like, you have to take and you, know, and you have kids. You have kids, so you got to do what's to protect you and yours. Right. Uh, and you know, last night, it's funny you said that because last night when I was laying in the bed, I thought about that. I said, what if he come in here right now, you know, and just stand over me or try to, you know, because when he left, we had three guns and he took all three of them. See? And he, and, he, he, yeah, he, I thought about that. He know that he know that you're not going to get a restraining order on him or he thinks that you're not because you had the opportunity to a couple times and then you canceled it on him. Yeah. So it's like. I mean, I don't know, you got to do, and you don't have guns now. He took the guns, so, like, you got to do something to, just to protect yourself because that's a dangerous situation. I, wow. So it's like, you never know, and there's a lot of stuff like that going on, and I want you to be safe. So it's good for you to take the precautions, especially since you have kids. Like, has he ever done anything to your kids? You know, like, the only thing he had, so like my 15 year old son, it's just like he always had a problem with my son. I don't know if it, it's because he don't have like biological kids and he don't know the bond that you have with your child or whatever. But I mean, he shows favoritism between the kids. Like my son, it, I feel like he didn't care as much for him as he does the two girls. So with my son, it's just like one day he got so upset with him because he didn't do a chore and he tried to actually wrestle my son into the wall to the point where he put like a hole in the wall. Yeah. yeah. And, it, it was, and it wasn't even that serious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think, I mean, from my experience, like growing up, I experienced that with my mom's husband, which is my brother's dad. Like before my brother was born, he used to like, I think he was he was with my mom since I, since I was ten, and they got divorced when I was like seventeen. But like uh like from the age of ten and stuff, like sometimes he'll get an attitude, get mad, he'll come in there, he'll slam me on the ground, or he'll kick me, or do some wild shit just for no reason. Just took it out on me. But until I was when I was like fifteen, sixteen, that's when I fought him back, and then it never happened again after that. Like we had an actual fight. And then it never happened. He never put his hands on me again after that. And he apologized to me later in life, like 19, 20, apologized and made amends. Mm-hmm. But they was divorced and all that. But that, like, that's my brother, dad. But like, I don't know, like, just from my experience, like, it's it's just, I don't know. You had to do what you had to do to protect you and your kids. And that's, that's like a, that's a red flag right there. That shit automatically, that shit automatically terminated your relationship when he did that to your kids. Like my situation I didn't like tell my mom, but I I more so felt like my mom wouldn't care anyway. I just felt like my mom should have known. But like I say, like he used to slam me around, kick me, like punch me sometimes. It's just just for, just cause no reason. Just and he told he told me later in life he was fighting his own demons and he apologized and all of that. But it stopped like once I fought back. But you had to do what you gotta do to protect yourself. I personally think you should get a restraining order just on just to protect you, and protect your kids. And just for your safety, because you're a grown woman, you by yourself, you got kids, and he already showed, you know, that he could be dangerous towards you and your kids. And I don't want nothing right. to happen to you. I appreciate that. I don't what... either. Thing is, is that I always been, you know, I never understood it, and I just accepted it. I, the thing is, I always been a great woman to him. Like I, I like I was a hundred percent lawyer. Like I never cheated on this guy ever. Like I cooked. I I always worked. I worked. I cooked. I cleaned. I was always there for him. I always supported him. I always had his back no matter what. But his but I guess that wasn't a you know it wasn't enough. And you know like you said like. And you know what, honestly, when that happened between him and my son, at that point, I didn't want to leave him. I really did. Like, I had started to look at him totally different. Like, totally different. Yeah, you don't put your honestly, hands on kids, and especially not your right. kids. Right. It was just, I, I don't know. I, you know, I I'm, don't know what you can't, made I mean, me say this on the side. 
being in love with them. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, don't don't beat yourself up over it. I mean, it's like a learning experience, and in the future, like if you move on to when you do move on, because I'm expecting you to move on and find a better situation. But more so, I want you to like focus on yourself and heal yourself and get yourself right, right. before you step into the field. But you know what signs to look for. I wish my friend was right. on a. I wish you. I wish you could talk to my friend right now. I mean, we might have to do a part two if you want to. Like she was in like a similar situation, but she wrote a book about it, and she wants to help women that's dealt with like domestic violence and stuff like that. Uh, her book called No Apologies, and she an author. Her author. Her author name is Complex Angel. I mean, I'll try to link y'all up on Facebook or on Instagram so y'all okay. can talk because I think she has like a Facebook group too, where they you know okay. where she helps people out with that type of stuff, getting over that. But she wrote a book about it. But um, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to set it up where all three of us could talk on the phone, or maybe you could talk, or I mean, because just okay, so you get like cool. a like you can get a woman's perspective and how she handled that situation. Right. That's cool. I'll be down for it. All right. I mean, I feel, but definitely, I I mean, I feel like you should get that that uh, order to protect you and your family. I mean, in a divorce, you might turn out good in a divorce. You might end up getting to keep the house. You feel me? You don't... Well, actually, I went and met with his lawyer actually last weekend. <laughs> what he's trying to do is a contest, um, a quick, fast divorce. So he wants to do like a 30-day divorce. I mean, he, he claiming he want to get divorced um, pretty fast. Um, he don't want the house, and he don't want me to have the house. So what you got to do? Okay. To sell the house. So what you should do? Well, if he sell the house, he's going to, have to split it with you fifty fifty or something like that. But do you have yeah. your, do you have your own lawyer? Actually, I went and did a consultation with the lawyer, and we talked, and she said whenever you receive papers like in the mail or whatever, whether because he hadn't actually filed, he just did an agreement. He he did an agreement. He hasn't filed yet. So she was like, whenever you get papers in the mail for an agreement or a file, just bring them to me or whatever. So actually Monday, I got to take her this letter and explain to her what we talked about. Because I haven't signed anything and I haven't agreed to anything. Yeah, don't, but, ag yeah, don't agree. Let your lawyer handle all of that because you don't want to get right. the short end of the stick in that situation either. Right, exactly. And that's, and that's what he's doing. He's trying to come out as cheap as possible. Yeah, do but all whatever you doing for here on out, evolving that situation. Think about you and your kids. What's best for you and your kids? That's all that matters. Right, so, and you're right. Whatever he did, he already showed you that you know that he's your enemy. He already showed you that he's not there for you. Sometimes I know love I have is stuck like that, but you got to look at it like when you were a kid or when you did something and. If a parent told you not to do something, but you did something and you got away with it or they forgave you easily or whatever they forgave you for wasn't as harsh as you thought it would be. So you might have kept on doing it or you might have thought you got away with something. So you kept on doing it and kept on doing it. That's what that's what it looked like. It'll happen in this situation. So it's like you got you got to put it into it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. It's, it, believe, trust me, like I know it's hard to get over people. I've been through my my share of heartbreaks and relationships but you'll get over it you want you're gonna find somebody better because you definitely don't deserve that there's a there's and a, i know i don't there's millions of people in america so you got you honestly got, I, I can't after all we've been through and how he deserve, just left us like that and how he's still gone now and still not paying any bills like we stand a 3700 square feet house mm -hmm. and it's a two-story house so it's huge so I mean, and our bills is really, like, our expenses is really up there. He's not doing anything. He's not providing nothing. He's staying over there at his sister home, but he's not providing here at the house, doing absolutely nothing. How he's doing, like, he's showing me who he really was all along. Like, there's no way that I will go back to him at all. I don't even want to. Like, I'm so done with this guy. I'm done with him. Yeah, in that, situa yeah, in that situation, you definitely make sure that, 
you could take advantage of that. I'm glad that you're done with them. Just make sure that you could take advantage of it. Make sure you keep all your receipts showing that you're paying everything. Because he shouldn't even oh, yeah. have he shouldn't have control over the house or nothing. Even though y'all married because you paying everything. He he hasn't been there for how long? You say like well, like a month so far, right? Right. Yeah, so like just make sure you save everything, showing that you paying everything. And make sure you definitely don't talk to his lawyer no more. Make sure that your lawyer talks oh, to his no. lawyer. And just do what oh, you no. gotta do. But you gotta stop him from being able to just come over your house and being able to pop up. Cause like even just seeing him like like you said, that'll bring back memories. That's that might alter your mem- that might alter how you feel. It might say like maybe this could work. Maybe this maybe you know what I mean like just you gotta stop all contact with him. Right. By any and, means possible. And, and that's what I've been doing. Like this whole week, I haven't I don't talk to him at all. And and I love it like that because once again, when I don't text him, he don't text me. We don't talk on the phone. He don't just pop up. I'm fine. I don't think about him. At all, but when he does that, it just takes me back, and I hate it. And the only reason why I haven't blocked him is because of the divorce uh, situation. I'm trying to, you know, see where we're going with this for us to filing, trying to see if he's going to file first or whatever. But when I go and talk to my lawyer Monday, I'm just going to ask her, like, what's the best thing for me to do? Yeah, it might be best for you to file first, too. So, either or, though. <laughs> If he don't, if he right. just playing around, like, yeah, he don't deserve to be taken advantage of like that, so, I right. just hope everything, I want everything to work out for you. Oh, me too. So. Me too. But other than that, how's everything going with you? Everything is good? Like, everything? Everything good. Like I said, it's just, it's getting easier every day. I take my mind off of it. I go out to eat with my friends more now. Mm-hmm. Like, we go shopping, or we go, like, to lounges and stuff. So, it takes my mind off a lot of things. I'm I'm just so happy to have, like, the friends that I do have, I'm so happy to have them in my corner because they literally take my mind off of it every single day. Like, seriously, every day. To the point where I don't have to think about him. I know life get hard, man. Whatever you going through, stay strong. Don't let it break you, man. It's dedicated to anybody that felt like giving up. Repeat after me, man. They say you won't let it break you, man. You stay strong through the ups and downs. You won't see the light at the end. You won't win. Thanks to me. I done had a homie 
shake my hand Walk around like that's my man Talk behind my back crazy though We robbing nigga, he made a plan I took the burner, he took the ran It was dumb but I took the chance We got booked and we went to court I was thinking for it, he took the stand Yeah, I lived a crazy life Carrie Burns paid the price Couple while I was at the district You study overnight Did a couple years upstate I ain't going back, that's enough break You can never get enough cake You can never get enough, ayy